Good morning world. Jordan and I are gonna get the traveler ready, which means we're just gonna finish where Cyril left off, which is just sand off some varnish and put some new varnish on. Get down, poodle. We are going to wire in the alternator, which is part of installing the Renergy stuff. Searle is down below in the bilge. I am going to get the wires coming from the alternator over here, and hopefully it's easy peasy lemon squeezy. How much slack do you want me to pull? You just pull everything and then I'll tell you when to stop. Okay. Right. Cable management. Just for Aubrey. Oh, I like my wires to be yet? sexy. This boat is gonna have to give birth to a soul in a moment. This no. is the worst place to get a cramp. Do you want me to shove you in with this broom? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm lying down comfortably now. Out with the old, in with the new. What do you have there? Old wire, because Cyril just informed me bigger is better. Okay. okay. So this is the starter, and you can see the solenoid. Needs a little bit of love and attention. You can also look at the back of the transmission here. That is not what it should look like. And you can see that the cable for the gear shift, one of them are broken. That's actually from the interior helm. The one that matters actually works. Engine mount on this side looks a little bit shoddy. Yeah, it's a good patina of rust and red and gray. In today's project news, we're going to cut new glass for the transom windows. We've taken off the frames and we're gonna cut uh, some templates and then we're gonna take them to storage and we're gonna cut some plexiglass and then we're going to put them in. So this is step one and we will see you step two tomorrow. So let's get, let's get going on these templates. That's pretty heavy. So. Good thing I've been gymming lately. <laughs> Last one. So today we're going to install Lee Clock. Poodle's gonna sit on them. Lee cloths are safety netting for sailors to stay in their bunk when the boat is on a heel, meaning when the boat's on its side, Joy made them for us. Um, and they'll be permanently installed into uh, the bunk area and then when we're not using them, they'll go under the cushion. Uh, this is a fun little project and we used a kind of a mesh um, that's a little bit breathable, so that will be nice. And I think they're gonna look really good. So let's get these in. The first one we're gonna install is gonna be on the starboard side in the lower salon. And basically we're going to attach them here, here, and here. And we're gonna use something like probably three to five um, screws, I'm not really sure. We're gonna put washers in through the webbing and then we'll put an eyelet up on the wall behind me here so we can fasten them. So you guys will see how those go in. Pretty exciting, let's go. sailor stays inside there so when we're on uh, a heel the person doesn't roll out so now we are just deciding where to put the clip here this is a um, pad eye <laughs> so we're gonna put the pad eye here on the wall and then or the bulkhead oh, you guys fingers are getting hot telling me I'm calling stuff the wrong thing um, <laughs> then we're gonna be able to clip in right there and then these tighten um, not that you really need that, but Joy just went the extra mile. So, let's get screwing. All right, looks pretty good. And then when you want to get out, just, there it is. 
Beautiful. All right, one down, five more to go. I've got about one full foot this side. We should shift a little bit. We can shift a little bit down. Here we go. Cool. trip and while we're gone Searle's gonna build us some shelves. Isn't that right Poodle? So what I'm thinking is that this area can be for shoes. I don't want to hear your comments below. I want this covered for shoes. It makes sense in my brain that's what we're doing. So what I'm thinking is that we do a shallow shelf up here for flip-flops and obviously all of this is for high heels. <laughs> so Searle's gonna come in help me measure this and build me a couple shelves. Here's the measuring tape. Show me what you want. We can probably tuck this up and do some maintenance with this propane hose, right? So, I'm thinking. Four inches from the top. So you need the shelves that we're going to put in are going to be half inch thick, so... Okay, so can I have your pencil? Yeah. Half inch thick is about there. And so the next... Think about what it's yeah. going to be to get like a shoe into the spot. Yeah. Jordan, do you have any high heels? Uh, I have boots with heels on them. Oh, can I borrow one? Yep. Very cute. Paul Greens. Very cute. Yeah. Okay. So, but what would be great is maybe a little bar here to hook heels on. Mmm. Like a tiny dowel. Come on, California closets. I'm thinking if you want to do like high heels and stuff, maybe running dowels on the back of this cupboard because there's so much dead space at the top of this cupboard. Okay, so then... And then more just to have a nice uh, bottom on here where your shoes can sit nicely. Okay, yeah. so then if that's the case, then I think I just come down a little bit from the ceiling. Six inches from the top. Yeah, okay, six Perfect. inches, and we'll only go... Depth of it be like... A size eight. Depth, okay. Mm -hmm. okay. All right. That's an easy one tackle this cupboard or are we going to leave this cupboard for now? I think you should get on Pinterest and find some kind of creativity to put a glorious amount of high heels in the back of that cupboard. Honestly, I think we need to review the boat tour of Sokol because that boat had a awesome high heel that arrangement. That had like a walk-in closet. Actually, remember the shoe cupboard opened up and it had like... It was, it, it was a shoe cupboard just on its own. Yeah, but it had like, uh, just like little pockets that all the shoes went on. It's going to be for me to find that footage from the Daily Show. <laughs> Use your imagination. Sometimes we do boat tours on the Daily Show, which are pretty cool. They don't make it onto the YouTube channel, but they're on Daily Show. So I'm going to have to go to Daily Show number 526, probably, and find that boat. I but I'm going to do it for you. Do we have enough throw pillows? You know what? Here's the deal. More pillows, the less lonely I feel. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Are we ready? Yeah, we're ready. I'm moving in. Moving in. So this has been insulated beautifully. Mm-hmm. 
And this is just like a big abyss of a cabinet. It was an awkward hanging locker. Demonstrate how the coat hanger fits in, if you would. Oh boy, hold on. That works pretty good. Oh my gosh. That's pretty good. <laughs> okay. Somebody just went through the effort of installing that rail there. I know, it's Maybe so they weird. Have tiny baby hangers. That's so what we were thinking too, is baby hangers. Everything falls off though, it's unless they're clippy cool. baby hangers. <laughs> All you can wear is turtlenecks. <laughs> Shoot. <laughs> it's bikini bottoms and turtlenecks only. <laughs> I'm not ready for that look, and I don't think the world is. So everyone's happy in here. <laughs> we've, we've come up with a plan. Okay, so we're doing essentially three shelves. And when I say we, I mean Searle. Oh, you've got two honeydews making the honeydew list. Oh boy. Good luck. <laughs> Soon to be more honeydews because behind me there's two more bunks for <laughs> ladies. All right, so the project of the day lives here. What you see here is where the throttle used to be. What we had before was a throttle and a gear shift. And sometimes when you get into sticky situations, it gets exciting and you might grab the wrong one. Also, the gear shift and the throttle got in the way of this guy right here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna replace these cables and we're putting in a single gear shift throttle combo which is gonna make life a lot easier, a lot cleaner, and not leave room for mistakes. So let's get this puppy installed. There goes Searle drilling holes in my boat. How's that feel? Swish cheesy. <laughs> okay, so the idea here is now you have these holes and then you can just cut and cut and cut. I love when templates are included, it's so nice. Okay, now it's been whittled it down a little bit on the bottom so the rest of the mechanism can fit in. Now it's time to get these buggers out and run the new cables. In order to remove the cable, I've had to remove the retainer that's on the gearbox and you can see this piece is particularly rusted Update on the situation. We have removed all the old cables, which includes the lower helm station. These old Norse controllers, you actually have to take the whole thing apart to really gain access to the cable controls. So this is throttle in red, and this is transmission, and this was for the upper helm station. These are the new ones. So it's the next day and it seems that the throttle cables were not as straightforward as we had originally hoped. So there are two helm stations here, one down below and one up above, and there is an additional piece that's needed when you have dual helm stations. So Searle is sorting that out right now. It turns out that the forward and reverse were done opposite, which I think I told you yesterday, so he's up there fixing that, which is a huge job. How's it going? Even if you follow the instructions, as given in this Dutch manual, it's just not working the way it says it's going to work. So one thing has led to another and the boat is destroyed. But we're working on stuff. We're actually fixing a water tank right now. Let me show you what's going on. Sorrel wanted to move the main start battery from here to in here because this is a really accessible spot. We have pulled everything out, and now Searle's up top there filling this water tank, which we have not been using. If you can see, there is a like a hairline fracture right here, right where it says port. What happens is when you put the uh, hose in to fill up the water tank and you turn the pressure on too high, the breather valve, the release valve that releases pressure off the tank, can't work as fast as it needs to and then it'll blow a seam or damage the water tank so you always want to fill your water tank at a nice slow pace i know it's painful but that's the best way to do it we're going to fill this up and we're assuming that there's going to be water coming out of a crack right there okay we got a little old faithful situation in there okay so we've turned the water off seems like the breather hose for this the breather valve is fouled some way in a world where Searle gets to do arts and crafts all day. We fix things that we didn't intend on fixing today. The plan was to start the installation of the Renergy products. It's been started, but we're gonna run some major 
wiring systems to really get this party crack a lacking and then we got into places and just noticed other things that we could fix. So here we are. Cyril has the gloves on. He beat me to the gloves, but I did make the very cool foil mat. This was actually Cyril's idea. This, we're gonna build it up on this deal, saturate it, and then slap the patch on. How many licks does it take to get to the center of a Tootsie Roll Tootsie Pop? and work your way out. Now we're gonna pick this up like a little pancake and flip a -roozy the piece onto there. Oh, you love squishing that around, don't you? Not a beautiful place to be filming. It's very dark down there. However, I will tell you what's gonna be done. We painted a little bit of material. Oh, my face is red. It's a chemical sunburn. No, chemical suntan. Um, we painted on a little material onto the tank itself after giving it a really good sand with some 80 grit sandpaper. Then we did three layers of um, glass. We did biaxle and matte, two biaxle and then one matte, and then mixed up some epoxy resin, put it on the piece of foil, really worked it in, and then flipped it over with the um, matte on top and the biaxle onto the tank. And then now we're just putting a little bit more material on top and then letting it kick. We're using Fast Cure. It's pretty cold out, but uh, I think this is a successful project. When you're working with epoxies and you've got a lot left over, do not leave that container unattended because you could have a very aggressive exothermic reaction and burn your boat down. Fire. <laughs> yeah. All right, so we're going to clean up this mess and then do the project that we were actually setting out to do. Mm -hmm.